Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the key tactical themes between Tuchel and Guardiola and Chelsea's 2-1 win over Man City. When we break down the game and we do look at the board, we witnessed several changes to both starting 11s, but both sides were playing in a back three. Chelsea were more of a 3-4-2-1, and while City were initially thought to be a 5-1-4, it was technically a 3-1-4-2 with Sterling and Ferran Torres dropping off deeper into pockets of space in search of the ball. So first we'll break down how both sides look to approach the game out of possession, and then we'll analyze how they were able to get into key areas. First we'll start with Chelsea, and what we ended up seeing was that they did have their front three closing down City's back three, and what was key here was the movement of Gilmore as he looked to follow Rodri who was dropping off deeper to ensure that Chelsea kept it 4v4 from the front. You would see James and Alonso stepping to Mendy and Cancelo, and then Chelsea would technically be in a 4v4 battle with City's attack. Ferran Torres was tracked by Rudiger when he dropped off deeper, but what was interesting was City's movement down the left-hand side, because you had Gabriel Jesus occupying Christensen, but then Aguero was tucking into that christensen Azpilicueta gap, and that meant that Azpilicueta couldn't track the movement of Sterling. So what ended up happening was that Sterling often was the free man, and he was able to drop off into that midfield zone because Azpilicueta was worried about the movement of Aguero. Technically, this is where you simply need Nogolo Conte to shift across the pitch to close down Sterling, and then Chelsea's press would be effective. Here you could see Chelsea's press in full effect with Werner, Ziyech, and Pulisic stepping towards towards Ake, Laporte, and Diaz, and Gilmore stepping towards Rodri, dropping towards the edge of the box. However, there were times where Chelsea didn't look to have their front three closing down City's back three, and they simply built a pentagonal shape around Rodri. You'd have Werner shifting ahead of Laporte if he was on the ball, but then you'd have Ziyech and Pulisic tucking in a bit narrow, while Gilmore and Conte were pushing towards the City defensive midfielder. So you'd have five Chelsea players around Rodri, and that was to ensure that he couldn't get on the ball. Here, if you look to an example, what you end up seeing is Laporte on the ball ahead of Werner, and you could see the pentagonal shape around Rodri. But what you can also see is Rudiger tracking the movement of Ferran Torres towards the halfway circle, but no pressure on Raheem Sterling dropping off deeper as Conte's tucked in with Gilmore towards Rodri, and Azpilicueta can't step due to the movement of Aguero. But then if we look to another example, that pentagonal shape shifts into a square, and you have Werner and Ziyech ahead of Ruben Diaz and Laporte. But what you end up seeing is that Gilmore sticks with Rodri and Conte shifts across to deal with Raheem Sterling while Rudiger sticks with Ferran Torres and this was a more effective press for Chelsea. Here you could see Werner swarming Laporte while Gilmore and Pulisic step forward to Ake and Rodri and the City centre-back simply splits Gilmore and Pulisic to find Raheem Sterling dropping into his own third to receive the ball. You could see Conte isn't within close proximity of Sterling and James can't step due to Mendy and that is allow Sterling to break forward. But when you assess City's overall shape, now you have to question how they were able to create chances. Mendy and Cancelo struggled to get the better of Alonso and James in that opening half. Chelsea tried to ensure that Rodri couldn't get on the ball. And when you look at Sterling, while he did have an impact from those deeper positions, when he broke forward because Conte wasn't tracking his movement, he struggled to make an impact in the final third. But what was key for City here was the movement of Ferran Torres. Ideally, Guardiola wanted Sterling and Ferran Torres to pull out Azpilicueta and Rudiger, and that would create space out in the wider areas and in behind for Aguero and Jesus because the wingbacks were occupied. But because Azpilicueta was holding his position with Aguero, Sterling was free to pick up the ball in midfield if Conte wasn't shifting over. But Rudiger was tracking the movement of Ferran Torres. And what we saw in that opening half was that when Ruben Diaz was able to get on the ball freely ahead of Ziyech, he was looking to clip the ball over Alonso and Rudiger into that right half space for Jesus to pull out Christensen, and that would allow Aguero to make runs across Azpilicueta into that space, or Jesus would simply spin off into that zone to get on the ball. Here you could see Chelsea's press in full effect with Ziyech stepping towards Diaz, and Ferran Torres dragging out Rudiger. When the center back clips the ball over Rudiger and Ferran Torres, it falls to Gabriel Jesus dragging out Christensen towards the halfway line, but focus on Rudiger's positioning and look at Ferran Torres beginning to run beyond the Chelsea center backs. What happens next is that both Jesus and Christensen miss out on the ball, 
and it allows Ferran Torres to break beyond Christensen and Rudiger. And that's where you see Aguero in that gap between Reese James and Azpilicueta looking to break towards goal. Ultimately, Ferran Torres is able to place himself in right half space. And while he isn't able to play the ball into Aguero for a tap-in, Rudiger does well to track his movement and force Ferran Torres to sky his effort wide of the net. We witness a similar move in the build-up to City's opener. You have Ziyech not stepping towards Ruben Diaz tight enough, and Ferran Torres dragging out Rudiger towards the halfway line as Gabriel Jesus and Aguero run across their center backs. From this position, Christensen should be doing a good job of holding off Gabriel Jesus and clearing his lines, and you can see Aguero beginning to run across Azpilicueta and Sterling free. However, Christensen does a poor job of dealing with Gabriel Jesus, and it allows the city striker to break into right half space, dragging out Azpilicueta with Aguero breaking free into the box, and now you have Reese James having to leave his marker to track the movement of Sterling. Gabriel Jesus ends up playing the ball across Azpilicueta for Aguero. You can see Sterling breaking free goal side of James. And while Aguero fails to get control of the ball, Sterling's run does allow him to put City ahead. When we focus on City out of possession, yes, they were shaped in more of a 5-1-4. And that was designed to ensure that Chelsea couldn't build out of the back. They wanted Aguero and Jesus to step towards Chelsea's better passers in that center back trio, and that was Christensen and Rudiger. And then they had Ferran Torres and Sterling dropping off to close down Conte and Gilmore, while Mendy and Cancelo were closing down the wing backs. They technically could go 5v5 in that zone, but they wanted Rodri to hold his position in the center of the pitch, knowing that Pulisic and Ziyech could drop off deeper away from Ake and Ruben Diaz. And the key here was that if they were able to drop off deeper into pockets of space with the center backs not getting tight, then Rodri could shift across to create a 2v1 overload and help out his center backs to win possession. It was often down that side of Pulisic and Ake where they were using that advantage, and Ake did a very good job of dealing with Pulisic, but there were times where Rodri had to come across to help out his center back. So what you ended up seeing was that if the ball was shifted out, let's say, to Azpilicueta, then you would see Sterling stepping across to deal with Azpilicueta. And for the most part, you would have Gabriel Jesus dropping off deeper to close down Conte, and then that would leave Rudiger free. If we look to some examples, here you could see Aguero and Torres stepping towards Rudiger and Christensen. You have Gabriel Jesus on Gilmore. And then you are seeing Raheem Sterling on Nogolo Conte. Let's say Mendy was on the ball and he played it into Rudiger. You have Ferdinand Torres stepping towards the center back, Aguero applying pressure to Mendy but blocking off the passing lane into Christensen, Cancelo stepping to Alonso, and once again it's Sterling and Gabriel Jesus occupying Gilmore and Conte. Therefore, now when we focus on how Chelsea were able to get into good positions, it followed somewhat of a similar theme. Ake was tight on Pulisic and Rodri did a very good job of shifting across to contain that threat. But Cancelo did a poor job of sticking tight towards Alonso, and Ziyech was pulling out Ruben Diaz, and we often saw Timo Werner looking to make runs across Laporte into that space. Here you could see Ziyech in space ahead of Cancelo and Diaz at the halfway line, but focus on Werner beginning to make a run across Laporte. As Ziyech steps into City's half, neither Cancelo or Diaz step forward to apply pressure, and that's where Werner looks to make the run across Laporte into space behind Diaz, and minutes later, you have Alonso on the ball ahead of Cancelo who doesn't step tight, with Diaz focused on Ziyech, and that's where Werner looks to make the run across Laporte. Alonso locates the Werner's movement, and because Cancelo doesn't step tight to the wing back, he wraps the ball across Cancelo and Ruben Diaz focused on Ziyech, for Timo Werner to break into the left channel, and it places him in a 1v1 with Laporte, and this is where you expect the Chelsea striker to beat his man to break free on goal. At the start of the second half, we did see a slight tactical tweak from Guardiola. He swapped Gabriel Jesus and Ferran Torres' positioning, and now you had Ferran Torres and Aguero looking to break in behind, and that made City's attack more direct. Sterling was occupying Azpilicueta now. Here you could see Gabriel Jesus sitting towards Alonso, because you had Rudiger and Zuma forced to tuck in centrally due to the movement of Ferran Torres and Aguero in behind. In terms of personnel changes, the big tactical move here witnessed Ziyech coming off the pitch for hudson Adoy, and that gave Chelsea another direct threat on that right side of the pitch, 
And with Mendy struggling to deal with Reese James pushing forward, now you had a direct runner for Ake to deal with and a potential overload threat if they did look to target Mendy. But more importantly, where Chelsea were able to exploit space behind Ruben Diaz, now with Reese James getting beyond Mendy and Hudson Adoy providing that direct threat, they were able to pull out Ake and then exploit space behind that center back as well. Here we witness Conte receiving the ball from Aspilicueta to pull out Rodri, and you witness Pulisic dropping off of Ake and Mendy ahead of James. When Conte plays the ball into the path of Pulisic, he turns towards the outside to attract Ake and drops off the ball into the path of James. But you could see a Rodri ball watching and Conte beginning to make a run in behind the space Ake left free. When James receives the ball, now you have three city midfielders ball watching as Mendy doesn't get tight towards James and Rodri doesn't look to track the movement of Conte. James ends up playing the ball beyond the three center backs into the right channel and it allows Conte to break forward into right half space. In the build up to Chelsea's winner, you have James pulling out Zinchenko and Hudson Adoy dropping off into space ahead of Ake. When the right wing back pokes the ball into the Chelsea substitute, he's free to turn towards goal. And that's where he faces up with Ake and Zinchenko, and Gabriel Jesus comes across for cover. What happens next is Hudson Adoy is free to carry the ball forward, and it allows him to create a passing avenue for Werner, who's calling for the ball as he looks to make a run between Laporte and Ruben Diaz. Hudson Adoy pokes the ball across Laporte into right half space for Werner, and as he drags away both center backs, look at the movement of Hudson Adoy beyond Ake, and Alonso looking to make a run into the box with Cancelo ball watching. Werner ends up carrying the ball towards the byline. And with Diaz looking to block off the 6-yard box once again, you have Alonso and hudson Adoy making unmarked runs towards the edge of that zone, and Werner looks to pull the ball back across Diaz for the Chelsea winner. So while Guardiola's direct approach and pressing did cause Chelsea several problems, it was Tuchel's effective approach to drag out the center backs and get runners in behind that ultimately led to City's downfall. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.